Hello and welcome to the 11 o'clock news from Borean International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 17 of 2018, appointing Khalid Rabia Hussein Ali as Assistant Undersecretary for Industrial Areas in the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, effective from the date of issuance of this Royal Decree and to be published in the Official Gazette. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Secure Palace today Her Royal Highness the President of the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW, Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa. Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika presented to His Majesty the King a copy of the final report of the National Committee on the follow-up of the implementation of the National Model for the Integration of Women's Needs in the Government's Action Plan. Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika briefed His Majesty the King on the outcomes of the committee, which was formed upon a Royal Directive in 2011, as well as its achievements to merge women's needs in national policies, legislation, plans and programmes. His Majesty the King commended the efforts of Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika in laying the foundations that grant the continuation of Bahraini women's participation in the community, highlighting the achievements of the Supreme Council for Women that support all national efforts in this regard. His Majesty valued the cooperation of all authorities and sectors in the Kingdom with the Council to help it achieve its goals. His Majesty the King also stressed the importance of adopting the recommendations of the Council, which is to develop a comprehensive system for the governance of applications of equal opportunity in order to measure the indicators of women's competitiveness at all levels and its reflection on the status of the Kingdom of Bahrain at the international level. His Majesty the King noted the importance of the Princess Abika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa Award for Women Empowerment and the scientific messages and content it carries that affirm the richness of the Bahraini women experience and that the efforts of Bahrain have passed the traditional empowerment stage and reached an advanced level in which women are instrumental in raising the competence of Bahrain in all developmental sectors. His Majesty expressed appreciation for the award's contributions as an effective mechanism that is launched from the Kingdom to exhort the efforts of the United Nations state countries that aim to increase women's contributions to comprehensive and sustainable development. His Majesty the King hailed the establishment of the National Observatory of Gender Balance Indicators, which presents the efforts of Bahraini women and their remarkable achievements and preserves their status. He commended the women's noble role of the work in caring for their families and in serving the country. He expressed keenness on providing women with the best opportunities for their status in the community. Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika praised the support of His Majesty the King to the SCW's work and his follow-up on them, adding that as a result of His Majesty's directives, Bahraini women gained a leading status locally and globally. Her Royal Highness affirmed Bahrain's support of women and integrated them into the country's national development acting that figures, results and statistics reflect the Kingdom's remarkable development in all areas regionally and in a short period of time, where it has been able to reduce the gender gap in many fields, such as health, education and social affairs. Her Royal Highness then affirmed the Council's keenness to continue these efforts. Her Royal Highness presented to His Majesty the first copy of the National Report on Gender Balance and a report on the completion of the establishment of the National Observatory of Gender Balance Indicators as well as a special electronic application on the most important national statistics related to Bahraini women, implemented by the Council Secretariat in cooperation with the Office of the First Deputy Prime Minister. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isal Khalifa received today at Secure Palace Kanu family members, headed by Dr Abdul Latif Jasm Kanu, where they expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty for offering his condolences on the demise of the late Mubarak Jasm Kanu. His Majesty welcomed his guest and recalled the achievements of the late Mubarak Jasm Kanu, highlighting his role and efforts in serving Bahrain's economic and civilization march. His Majesty the King praised the role of Bahraini business families that support the national economy and reinforce investment in the country, as well as establish the values of solidarity and communication and all all. His Majesty noted the contributions of the Kanu family in the humanitarian and charity fields that aim to serve Bahraini society. For their part, the guests expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King and wished him abundant health and happiness to continue leading the march of development.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakir Palace today. Sheikh Hamad bin Rashid bin Jabba Al Nuwaimi, his son Khalid bin Hamad bin Rashid Al Jabba Al Nuwaimi, and his nephew Muhammad bin Abdullah Al Jabba Al Nuwaimi, on the occasion of the visit to the kingdom. His Majesty the King commended the deep-rooted historic relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, as well as the ties of kinship between the two kingdoms. His Majesty hailed the development and prosperity of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in the era of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and wished the attendees abundant health and success. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Gadebia Palace a number of royal family members and senior officials in the Kingdom. His Royal Highness expressed pride in the achievements of the Bahraini citizens during the era of His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Prime Minister affirmed that Bahrain has made many achievements towards progress and development and highlighted the government's keenness to achieve the aspirations of the citizens and follow up the implementation of development plans that reinforce Bahrain's status and its gains. His Royal Highness urged to give more attention to the history of Bahrain and encouraged efforts to document and preserve it. His Royal Highness recalled with appreciation the historic role of Bahraini and Gulf families in maintaining brotherly ties between them. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Gadebia Palace the British researcher, Hard King, who presented His Royal Highness with copies of two books on Bahrain. His Royal Highness hailed the efforts exerted in preparing the books, which represented an important reference for researchers specialised in the Kingdom's history and birds. The Prime Minister expressed admiration for the pictures and information in the book, wishing the researcher further success. For his part, researcher Hard King expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his support to researchers, commending Bahraini's people's coexistence and the Kingdom's development and progress in various fields. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gadebia Palace today citizen Ibrahim Ali Ahmed, who expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his prompt response to the conditions of his family and for his directives to the ministries and th authorities concerned to help the citizen and his family, taking into consideration the conditions of his two daughters. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister affirmed that he personally followed up on the conditions of the two girls, valuing the patience of the family and wishing them health and success. For his part, Ibrahim Ali Ahmed expressed thanks and appreciation for the personal follow-up of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, adding that this act reflects the care of His Royal Highness towards Bahraini citizens and wished His Royal Highness abundant health.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, today received the third batch of affiliates of the FDPM Fellowships Programme at Kadebia Palace. His Royal Highness was briefed on their experiences in the programme and the projects they work on and commended their commitment and responsibility in meeting the requirements of the programme and developing their skills. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince affirmed the importance of supporting plans and programmes that invest in the human element and develop youth competencies, refine their skills and consolidate the concept of leadership and innovation to serve the objectives of sustainable development. His Royal Highness noted that under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, Bahrain is keen on investing in the youth and to develop their abilities as they are the basis for advancement of society and the building of the future. His Royal Highness noted that such programmes will enrich the experiences of young people to understand various aspects of government work and improve their administrative and leadership skills, which contribute to the development of the level of government performance and enhance competitiveness and productivity. The Crown Prince praised the efforts that aim to achieve the goals of the programme, according to the integrated methodology that serves government work and contributes to improving its quality and performance. For their part, the affiliates of the programme expressed their thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for its directives and follow-up in the framework of the programme. They stressed that the programme provides an opportunity to develop the professional performance and contributes to motivating them and transferring their experiences to their work sites to serve their country. The FDPM Fellowship is considered an important opportunity for all young government employees to better understand local, regional and global changes. Through an extensive series of training and guidance courses, as well as working alongside senior government officials and decision makers, the programme focuses on the refinement of key skills and capabilities that will help improve government performance. The Danit al Lassi project was inaugurated today in Hamid Town. More in this report with Shog Mohammed. Located west of Hamid Town in the Northern Governorate, with a total land area of 106,713 square metres, the Danat al Lassi project was inaugurated today under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Nasr bin Hamad al Khalifa. The project is being built for beneficiaries of Mazaya, the social housing finance scheme organized by the Ministry of Housing, whereby beneficiaries have the opportunity to own their dream home through a real estate finance facility subsidized by the government of Bahrain. Uh, this is definitely a big event for all of us. Uh, uh, Iskan Bank, uh, the development uh, arm uh, and Ministry of Housing. Uh, through this uh, Dana Tellozi, uh, we intend to service uh, a wider uh, group uh, of, of beneficiaries or citizens. And uh, uh, hopefully through this uh, project, we, we lead by uh, increasing the supply of housing units uh, so that uh, a Mazaya program uh, can, uh, uh, can also service a bigger group of people. The project is the first of its kind to be established by a cooperation between Iskan Bank and the private sector and includes 303 villas, all of which are designed to meet the requirements of the modern Bahraini family. The development is designed to meet the highest standards of quality, taking into account the economic, social and environmental sustainability criteria. There are many aspects of uh, this project. Uh, to start with, this is our first uh, partnership with the private sector in developing social housing uh, of this magnitude and we are very thankful to our uh, core investors, our partners and uh, at, uh, the location is uh, beautiful. Uh, we try to inject into the projects elements of socio-economic sustainability so we have uh, a walking strip we have a commercial uh, uh, center, we have uh, green open spaces, and we aim to generate a very positive uh, energy and interaction between the residents. The project has a magnificent view of the Lozi Lake and its green spaces in the middle of the residential areas, which will be an outlet for residents in addition to the 720-meter walk along the lake, making the project a healthy environment for hiking and other sports. The Kingdom of Bahrain is making great initiatives under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, aimed at improving the standard of living of all citizens and achieving sustainable development. 
The Dianat Lozi project aims to be completed by the end of 2019 and will be a unique residential area for the Majin family. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shogun Hamid. The Council of Representatives held its weekly meeting today, chaired by the Speaker, Ahmed bin Ibrahim al Mullah, in which it approved the report of the Parliamentary Inquiry Committee on Medical Services in Health Centres and Hospitals, which includes 25 recommendations to improve the quality of these services and provide solutions for the challenges and problems that face the Ministry of Health. The Council also approved Decree Bylaw 38 of 2017 on amending a number of provisions of the Telecommunications Law issued in Decree Bylaw 48 of 2002. In continuation of the initiative to promote the spirit of belonging to the nation, launched by the Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, a 16 member committee to reinforce loyalty and national values was announced today as part of the Interior Ministry celebrations to mark the Community Partnership Day. The Ministry of Interior delivered the following speech. الحضور الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أشكركم جميعا على تفضلكم بالحضور فإننا نحتفل بيوم الشراكة المجتمعية والتي أصبحت ممارسة لا شعار بل إنها صورة من صور التلاحم البناء إنه ولا شك يوم من أيام الحصاد الوطني نحن في الواقع نحتفل بمرور 13 سنة على إعلان يوم الشراكة المجتمعية واسمحوا لي أيها السادة والسيدات الأفاضل أن أبين لكم كيف بدأ هذا المشروع الوطني في الحقيقة أن البداية كانت برغبة سامية من لدن سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المفدى حفظه الله ورع فهو حامي السيادة الوطنية وحافظ كرامته وكانت الرغبة السامية بأن يكون هناك تواجد قريب للشرطة في مختلف مناطق البحرين وقراها بشكل مسؤول يظهر الحرص والمساعدة للمواطنين ويشعرهم بالأمان في بيوتهم وعلى أنفسهم وعلى مصالحهم وعلى ضوء ذلك عملنا بفكرة تشكيل شرطة المجتمع وكان ذلك في عام 2005 مع مرور الوقت وتعرض البلاد إلى أحداث 2011 وما واجهناه من تدخلات أجنبية كان القصد منها استهداف الوطني البحريني والدفع بروح طائفية متطرفة والنيل من وحدة المجتمع وتماسك ولكن ولله الحمد فقد تكسرت تلك النوايا السيئة أمام صمود قيادة جلالة الملك المفدى القائد الأعلى حفظه الله ورعا ووعي شعب البحرين المخلص وإنني بعد تلك الفترة الدقيقة من تاريخنا أدركت أمق الفكرة ومعانيها الوطنية ومدى الحاجة لأهمية التعاون بين الشرطة والمواطن من أجل تقوية الجبهة الداخلية فالأمن واحد ولمصلحة الجميع الحضور الكريم الحمد لله فقد نجحت الدولة في تحقيق الأمن العام في البلاد بالرغم من حجم التحديات التي تعاملنا معها واليوم هناك جهود كبيرة تبذل من أجل أن تكون في هذا البلد شرطة عصرية قادرة على مواكبة التحديات الأمنية التي طرأت على مسرح الجريمة والجديد في الأمر أننا اليوم 
نعمل على إضافة حاجز أمني منيع إلى منظومتنا الأمنية أمام التدخلات الخارجية في أمننا الوطني وهو حاجز الانتماء الوطني وما يزيد تصميمنا على تنفيذ هذه المبادرة الوطنية هو حجم التضحيات التي بذلتها البحرين حتى تحقق استقرار وكذلك تلك الجهود المخلصة وحجم التضحيات التي بذلها رجال الأمن من أجل ذلك الاستقرار واستمرار التدخلات الإيرانية وغيرها في شؤون الأمنية الداخلية واستمرار عملها على تجنيد أبناء البحرين وتغيير مفاهيمهم الوطنية وتدريبهم على ارتكاب الأعمال الإرهابية واستخدام الأسلحة والمتفجرات وظهور التعاون بين الحرس الثوري الإيراني وقطر هذا بالإضافة إلى ما تشهد المنطقة من ظواهر التطرف والإرهاب ولكننا مثلما واجهنا التحديات الأمنية فإنا عازمون بعون الله على رص النسيج الاجتماعي وسوف نعمل معا بكل إخلاص لتعزيز الروح الوطنية فالدولة المتماسكة اجتماعيا تكون عصية على من أراد أن يعبث بأمنها لأن الإرادة الوطنية المخلصة تعلو وتقوى على الأطماع الخارجية فهي تمثل إرادة الحق والحق يعلو ولا يعلى عليه أيها الأخوة الحضور البحرين بلد الوطنية أنا أتحدث عن الوطنية التي صوتت لعروبة البحرين بقيادة الشيخ عيسى بن سلمان آل خليفة أمير البلاد رحمه الله ردا على مطالبات شاه إيران وكان ذلك أمام لجنة تقصي الحقائق في عام 1970 وأتحدث عن البحرين التي صوتت بنعم للميثاق بنسبة 98.4 بقيادة جلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه والبحرين التي تغلبت على الفوضى والتزمت بالنظام في عام 2011 والبحرين التي انتخبت نوابها بعد انسحاب من أرادوا أن يعطلوا حياتنا الديمقراطية لا شك لنا أن نفتخر بهذا الرصيد الوطني ونحافظ عليه أيها الأخوة الحضور لن نترك أبناء البحرين أدوات هدم وتخريب في بلدهم بتوجيه ودعم من الخارج وسوف نعزز التوعية والنصيحة لهم كما يجب أن يعرفوا بأن مصلحتهم في صلاحهم وفي التزامهم وتحمل مسؤوليتهم الوطنية في المشاركة والبناء وكيف أن يقولوا لا لمخالفة القانون وهذا ما أبداه من تأسف وندم من أدرك الحقيقة بعد مواجهة القانون لأن الخيار الآخر هو مخالفة القانون وهذا خيار فاشل لا يخدم الشخص ولا يخدم عائلته ولا يخدم الوطن وفي هذا السياق الوطني فقد تقدمت وزارة الداخلية بمبادرة شاملة بهدف تعزيز الانتماء الوطني ولإنجاز هذا المشروع الوطني الهام تم عرض فكرة تشكيل لجنة تعزيز الولاء الوطني وترسيخ قيم المواطنة على نخبة من الكفاءات الوطنية والذين نشكرهم على قبولهم المشاركة مع إخوان لهم في وزارة الداخلية ويسعدني في هذا اليوم المبارك أيضا أن أعلن عن قبول دفعة جديدة لشرطة المجتمع مؤلفة من 200 فرد للمرحلة القادمة من أجل تعزيز الشراكة المجتمعية كما لا يفوتني 
في ختام هذه الكلمة من توجيه خالص الشكر لكل المواطنين الذين ساهموا في ترسيخ مبدأ الشراكة المجتمعية قولا وعمل والشكر موصول طبعا إلى رجال الأمن الأوفياء الذين قدموا المثل الأعلى لتعزيز هذه الشراكة والارتقاء بها لتحقيق المصلحة الوطنية العليا في ظل العهد الزاهر بسيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته After the speech, the formation of the Committee to Reinforce Loyalty and National Values was announced with the task of drafting a comprehensive strategy and vision. Then a film on national identity and the values of nationalism, which are among the foundations of the reform project of His Majesty the King, was screened. It focused on the responsibility of all members of society to promote the national identity. The film also highlighted the community partnership strategy implemented by the Interior Ministry as an advanced concept to reinforce loyalty and nationalism. The Interior Minister then honoured a number of officers, commissioned officers and men and women in the police force for their distinguished community partnership roles and their efforts to reinforce the relation of trust between police and various sections of society. A number of citizens who had assisted police in legal cases to achieve comprehensive security in all parts of Bahrain were also honoured. The Minister of Education, Dr Majid Bin Ali Al Nuemi, inaugurated today a training programme for 62 ministry employees in the Regional Centre for Information and Communication Technology in Issa Town. The programme was organised in cooperation between the Ministry of Education and the Arab Bureau for Education for the Gulf States. The Minister of Education noted that this programme reflects the efforts of the Kingdom in reinforcing the values of tolerance, coexistence and dialogue which were promoted internationally due to the directives of His Majesty the King to establish King Hamid's Global Centre for Interfaith Dialogue and Peaceful Coexistence. The Minister hailed the cooperation between the Ministry and the Arab Bureau for Education, which resulted in the implementation of the programme, adding that it will develop the capabilities of the educators. For his part, the Director General of the Arab Bureau, Dr Ali bin Abdul Khalid Al Karni, hailed the cooperation of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Ministry of Sports and Youth Affairs held a press conference for NASA Bin Hamid International Youth Creativity Award, which will begin a new phase in which responsibility for young Bahrainis and the youth of the world will be shared through integrating the Sustainable Development Goals into the award for the first time. During the conference, it has been noted that the award will acquire new dimensions to provide the youth with further opportunities for creativity. As part of the cultural exchange activities uniting Bahrain and the US, the American Embassy invited the American director and producer of cause-based award-winning documentaries, Robin Hauser, here in Bahrain to share her experience. More in this report with Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. As part of the great ongoing cultural exchange activities uniting Bahrain and the U.S., the American director and producer of Coast-based documentary award-winning films, Robin Hoser, was here in Bahrain to share her experience with universities, schools, social clubs, fellow professionals and even beginners. The uh, embassy invited me to come to share the story about some of the films that I've been making. It's a wonderful exchange between Bahrain and the United States and ability to show the filmmakers some of the causes that they um, believe in and some of the work that I've done. And uh, I think what's been most interesting to me is to realize that even though I come from a very, very different culture, um, that I've been able to sort of create an understanding and a bond between uh, some of the audience that I've screened to here. She discussed her views behind her film that caught the attention of international tech industry and of policymakers in Washington, D.C. and abroad. The film that I'm here to screen is called Code Debugging the Gender Gap, and it's about the lack of women and diversity in technology. 
Robin hasn't only shared her experience, but her presence in Bahrain and all the people she has met have impacted her life as well. I find the people to be very warm and welcoming, uh, very generous, beautiful, um, intelligent. So it's been a, a remarkable experience for me. The relations binding Bahrain and the U.S. are deep-rooted and sustainably nourished on many levels. We try to bring different kinds of artists. We've brought filmmakers and musicians and speakers on different topics, um, people involved in, in dance and music here to Bahrain, and we uh, try to so they can mix with their Bahraini partners and can build people-to-people -people ties that go beyond what regular diplomats would do. It's a kind of a great chance for our both sides to learn a little bit more about one another. And I know so many of our American guests uh, leave here thinking that everything they, they thought about the Gulf or the uh, Middle East before they came here was different. And they'd leave, which is usually asking when they can come back next. Nothing can reveal a country's underlying identity and convey spirit, character, and values such as art. It's the best cultural exchange means to deepen mutual understanding and promote friendship and goodwill between people, not just governments. Never underestimate the role of international creative exchange in arts in fostering ties between countries and deepening understanding across cultures. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffour.